The Majora's Mask Category Extension Board has a long history in Zelda speedrunning, containing over 100 different speedruns that don't quite make the cut for the main leaderboards. This board contains a ton of unique speedruns, such as item RTAs, where you attempt to get a certain item as quickly as possible. It also contains some much more challenging and strangely restrictive categories, such as Reverse Dungeon Order, a speedrun we've covered on this channel before. However, the speedrun we're talking about today is one that you've probably never even heard of. Any percent, no ISG. I'm sure a lot of you are confused on what ISG is and why the Zelda community is so obsessed with abbreviations. So let's hit the ground running and talk about the Infinite Sword Glitch. The Infinite Sword Glitch, or ISG, is a glitch in both Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask and was first documented in 2006 by the hero MX. By interrupting Link swinging his sword, most commonly with a crouch stab, the sword hitbox does not get deactivated. While swinging your sword, the game puts Link in a state where he is unable to fall from ledges. This can be abused with ISG to perform another trick, known as bomb hovering, a trick that is vital to almost every single glitch category in Majora's Mask. So, the no ISG category was created to showcase what a speedrun of Majora's Mask would look like if this vital glitch was never found. And for a long time, it wasn't that interesting. This category dates back all the way to 2015, where the speedrunner Flan This got every single transformation mask, near glitchlessly navigated the Pirate's Fortress to collect every egg, beat almost all of Woodfall Temple, Snowhead Temple, and Stone Tower Temple, and defeated Majora in an hour and 43 minutes. Which seems kind of surprisingly low for the time, right? The record in the traditional any percent category was a 126.07 by Anup at the time, after all. Well, one quirk of the Majora's Mask extension boards is its timing method. Rather than starting from the beginning of the game like most speedruns, extension categories have the option to be ran from the race file, a file that begins after the 20 minute introduction first cycle. So really, this time by Flam This was much closer to over 2 hours long. But Majora's Mask has come a long, long way since 2015. So how are speedrunners able to overcome this challenge now? Well, that's what this video is about after all. So don't forget to subscribe, and let's get on with the run. Okay. So we start from race file, which is basically after the introduction sequence, so it's after we have Deku Mask and everything, and then we start with Rupees in the Bank. So I can just buy explosives now. Even though we can't like hover or anything, explosives are still good for a lot of things. So it still kind of starts like normal categories. We use race file because this is not on our main leaderboards, it's on extensions, and extension categories have the option to use race file. It also makes these like harder and not standard speedruns a little bit easier because they do like weird tricks that might be super reset heavy. Okay, so now I'm gonna do bomb time stop by the gossip stone. Like so. And then that'll let us play a song. There's normally like a cutscene here that you don't normally see in speedruns, but it's like a really, really, really long cutscene with Skull Kid. So if we start the song of double time there, we can skip it by entering the loading zone. And it also clears it, so we can go back through this entrance and not trigger the cutscene again. So we also can't do stuff like Swamp Gossips, which like most categories that get Sonata would do here. So we have to do something a little different. Normally you have to like ride the, the like boat cruise to uh, get to the Deku Palace to get past this big Octo. We have a way to get past him. Assuming I don't mess this up. I cannot believe he didn't grab me again. Okay, cool. Normally we would do a super slide there with uh, ISG because we would do a hover in the next room, but that's cheating, so. This is how you do Deku Palace without ISG. Normally you would like do a hover to get up there, but you can just do a damage boost and it works fine. It uses a lot of like glitchless and bug limit strats, yeah. There's one coming up in Woodfall that's not the same as something that's done in Bug Limit, but it's very similar. Yeah, it's kind of cool because ISG's pretty much been in the run since people started speedrunning this game. It's kind of cool to see the game without like literally the biggest glitch that's used every single run. This run's also benefited a lot from a lot of the glitches that were found within the last like two years or so. 
Another thing that's really cool about this category is like most speedruns outside of like ADR would use index warp at this point, but um, we can't hover to get to the hidden owl, so we have to get the bow from Woodfall the, the casual way through here. This room is horrible because the game runs at like half speed for some reason, and these guys are the most annoying enemy in the game. There's a fast route where you can just quickly hop around them, but it's uh, not fun. I also need a stick, and these Deku Scrubs can drop a stick if I'm lucky, but if not, I have to grab one from the pot up here. He gave me a rupee instead. Yeah, they can also drop nuts, um, which also would save time if we got it from them, but not as much as getting the stick. Getting the stick from this pot is kind of annoying because when you break a pot that has like a like a free standing item like the stick, it just flies randomly and sometimes it just falls off the platform, so I have to do this kind of like carefully. Okay. Didn't get completely unlucky. We do need nuts as well, but we're not going to get that until after we get bottle. So we just want to get the bow from Woodfall right now. Problem is normally to skip half the dungeon, we would do a mega flip to get to the torch pillar. Um, unfortunately, that requires uh, a certain glitch we're not allowed to do. So I have to do something much more difficult. But it looks pretty cool. There we go. Dude, okay, okay, what just happened there is the the moths from the torch hit me at the exact same time that I pulled out the bomb chew and it instantly blew up my bomb chew. <laughs> that has never happened to me before. I did not even know that could happen. Should be fine. Nice. That trick is triple frame perfect. So that is a recoil jump, which is different from a long jump where you keep the roll invincibility while grabbing the ledge while also having like a twisted camera angle like that. And it causes you to jump backwards. That happened to me one time in 100%. When I was trying to do an SRM, I got hit by a deck at the frame, I left the ledge and it shot me through a loading plane and killed my, my SRM. It was pretty awesome. Also, I have glitched health because of the moths, I think. I also need to play ISOT. So right now we're trying to get Red Potion and then make it back to Clock Town before like 5 a.m., which is when the Curiosity Shop closes. Um, this hive has 20 rupees in it for some reason. Gotta do kind of a hard hess, actually. It's harder than it looks. And then I have to do another hard hess. Alright, we're not hessing here. An H hess, a hyper hyper extended super slide. That'd be huge. A marathon of every MM speedrun category in one sitting. That sounds horrible. Not even because of length, but because of like not resetting. So now we're getting to bottle because we're going to have to do something kind of strange with it. So this is the part of the run on this split. You can see it's very ominously named. Um, we need to get our sword stolen from the bird in Terminal Field. And the bird is weird. For one, it doesn't steal anything from you if you don't have the bow yet. And also, if you have a potion in a bottle, uh, then it'll steal the, the bottle. But it only steals the bottle if you have a potion in it for some reason, so we have to drink this and then replace it with water in a second. But it's still RNG if the bird actually steals uh, the sword or not. Sometimes it just steals your rupees and your items, meaning it'll just steal my bombs, and the bomb count's already kind of tight, so it's a little annoying if that happens. So hopefully it doesn't. To be entirely safe in case something horrible does happen, I'm just gonna grab bomb drops here. Okay. Hopefully, we also need rupees, so if the bird steals rupees instead, that's also really bad. 
So now I'm down 10 rupees here. You have got to be kidding me. No, he took the red, dude. Just take the sword. Oh my god, this is really bad. If this happens, I have to do something a little slow later, but it's not that big of a deal. Just take the sword. Thank you. Okay, so we got the sword stolen, and now we're gonna go buy it back. So, this is a frame-perfect trick, and if I fail it, our run is dead. <laughs> so, uh, let's hope that doesn't happen. But I actually don't have enough rupees to buy back the sword, so I have to dupe this water really quick. I'm just gonna dupe over the nut. Okay, nice. We got it. So now we put on the sword as we buy, or put on Deku Mask as we buy the sword. And now we have sword on Deku B button, which has the same strength as the Great Fairy Sword. And now I have to make money back from what the bird stole. Okay, so now we have sword on Deku B button, and now I don't have a sword as human for the rest of the run. Which is a little annoying. So now we're gonna actually get action swap and index warp. 30 minutes another run. <laughs> so now we're gonna do Great Bay, but we don't have an item to equip swap with yet. So this part of the route, I've actually wondered if there's any better alternatives, but I couldn't really think of anything. So instead, we're going to clip into Observatory and get the Moon Steer. Is ISG allowed in the no ISG category? Uh, yes. So the sword on that we have as Deku now is essentially like getting the Great Fairy Sword early. It's just like a little more strange. And then because we hit the Owl Statue with the big stick, we can warp anywhere. I want to try to time the day transition to happen while I'm in Great Bay Temple. Because whenever you're inside of a, a dungeon, you don't have a day transition cutscene, which is fast. And this is also a Japanese version thing. If you get time stop, you can push this guy who's dying up here and then skip his cutscene. Although my angles... Oh no, that's actually fine. I'm getting a little scared because uh, the next split is the hardest split in the room. Yeah, this category is actually kind of difficult. There's a really hard recoil flip strat in Woodfall Temple that's triple frame perfect, and there's not really a good alternative for it. But this is uh, the hardest split in the run. The alternative for what I'm going to do in Pirate's Fortress is not what I would call beginner friendly. Would I shave my eyebrows off for 10 bits? Uh, yeah, of course not. This, this strat is rough. So normally in a speed run, if we were to go to get a hookshot, we would just do a hover. Um, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to. So I have to do sewer skip in a much, much more difficult way. So in my opinion, the hardest part of the strat isn't even the actual strat, it's landing on this f***ing boat. It's so hard, it's actually so hard. If I get caught, this is run over. Or not run over, but it's not good. Get on the boat. This might be too early. Nice. <laughs> so in the Japanese version, the pirate is further back here, so you can actually just not get caught if you side hop right away. Then you can just shoot her. This skips a lot of Pirate's Fortress. There is no difference in vision between Japanese and English, which is like kind of a misconception because people think because of that strat they changed the vision, but they actually didn't. They just moved the guard forward. Okay, so now I can do like an ESS shuffle away so that we can sort back to Ray Bay and then we need to get New Wave Bossa Nova. Three. Happens if you miscount. If you undercount, then your run is dead because you're out of eggs. If you overcount, it's not that big of a deal. You just have one less bottle because you have an egg in it. Conditions to equip swap. Um, it's different from OOTD. You just need something on the right side 
So like you can use stuff like light arrows, you can use bow. It just depends on what else is in your inventory. Okay, so we can actually skip this cutscene too. If you just press Ocarina again, and then we can sort out. This night transition might actually hit at a bad time. Do a little Zora house here. If you have a night transition in the water, it places you back on land. So I was a little bit worried I was going to be like halfway here and then get put back. Now it's time for another hard frame perfect trick. And then immediately after we have another hard frame perfect trick. That's turtle cutscenes, kid, that's hard. But now I have to do another hard trick. So an exclusive trick on the English version is Song of Double Time cutscene skips. So normally here you would just play Song of Double Time and skip this cutscene coming up. But uh, we can't do that on JP because the area doesn't reload. So I have to do a significantly harder version. So I'm gonna start the cutscene. The cutscene can't properly start. And then we can skip the cutscene like that. Well, that was uh, pretty scuffed. Okay. Easiest trick in the game, by the way. This is not hard. Thank you. That's what that's what normally happens. I don't know what was going on with my camera there. Okay. So this is uh, actually really interesting in this run, this boss fight. So if you've ever watched um, NMG 100%, they do a cutscene dive with GFS to kill Gyorg and skip the second phase. Um, and since we have Deku Sword, we can do something kind of similar, but also kind of not similar at all. There we go. Okay. So you can jump slash him underwater, and then he just dies instantly in one hit. So a big reason why NMG any percent is on English is because of Snowhead Hess, um, where you Hess all the way up Snowhead to enter the temple without Goron's lullaby. But that's actually only that only works on the English version of the game because in the Japanese version, it gets stuck uh, and you also need ISG. So we can't do that. So instead, we have to do a relatively new way of skipping lullaby. I think old versions of this category used to get Goron's mask and Goron's Lullaby, because there's no real way to get up there without ISG. Except maybe like the glitchless way, but that's uh, a challenge. And now we're going to go to Mountain Village. So Index Warp just works based off the map points you have unlocked on your map. It leads to different locations. So if we go to Goron Village, that will unlock the um, Stone Tower Temple Warp Point. Bomb count's still pretty low, but it's fine. Okay, so now that we're here, I'm gonna warp again. This time we're going to Milk Road. And this is like the in-game time in this category is actually kind of challenging because we need it to be nighttime in Great Bay, but we need it to be daytime in order for us to be able to buy milk here. And then also so that Snowhead doesn't have a bunch of enemies on it, which can get pretty annoying. Okay, and by going here to Milk Road, it unlocks the Snowhead Warp Point. So we're still soaring to Snowhead, which if you've ever seen like a an any percent run on the Japanese version, they normally do an alternate exit and then go from the fairy fountain. But uh, there was a new Snowhead lullaby skip method found. So I'm gonna try to hook shot this right here and then drink milk. Now I'm just gonna side hop up this mountain a little bit. I'm gonna equip Zora Mask over this. Now I can fly, and the wind doesn't push me. So this is like a remote hookshot Zora Hover thing, 
I don't know if we fully understand what exactly is going on here, but the moral of the story is that we can fly and not get pushed by the wind. This also can be done in um, any percent no major glitches if you don't like doing the Hess. Whenever you're in this weird state of Zora, you can't actually move outside of doing this like slash attack thing. And so you can't be pushed by enemies, you can't take damage knockback, and you can't be pushed by the wind. It is not ISG. There is no infinite sword being glitched here, sadly. And this actually only loses apparently like 30 seconds to doing Snowhead Hess. So it's a, honestly not a bad beginner strat. So now we can go all the way into Snowhead Temple. No, I guess I'll go up. I just go here. Most people do the weird shot because I think it's faster technically if you go into that room anyways, but I'm just trying to show what's in this run. So we can hit like the very top bit of that torch. And then... Do another funny trick. Doesn't really do the job of showing what's going on, you know. So now I can skip all of Snowhead. Not a major glitch, by the way. And then Bosky skip. So we can skip Fire Rose by duping over Ocarina, which will give us a Tattle Text prompt, and then we can use that to Action Swap. Whoa, why did he start running? This is... It's actually awesome. He's over this way. Okay. <laughs> Interesting backup. Uh, that happened to my PB too, so it's fine. Okay. Now, hopefully I don't mess up the Odola fight. The Odola fight in this run is like kind of harder than normal because Odola has to be positioned in such a way that the blue warp spawns in the right spot. That could be a little scary. Now, we can't do the normal like upstairs BK skip where you do all the mega flips and stuff because uh, it's cheating. So instead, we have to do something a little bit different. We're gonna get action swap again. That is crazy that that missed. There we go. Nothing wrong with a little cheating here and there. No, it's not allowed, man. I'm gonna have to get arrows in Adola. This guy, for whatever reason, like guarantees to, like run up on you, but in 100%, like he never does. It's so weird. Might just be like the cycle he's on. But the other one leaves me alone. And now to do this BK skip, I have to do something a little different as well. Um, I also need deck amounts. So. Nice. Oh, hello. Uh, do you even get arrow drops here? I don't think you do. No ISG allowed in the chat. Anybody caught ISGing will be banned indefinitely. Okay, now we have to do Odola, which is very difficult. So ideally, I want to stun him right here. But he likes to not take damage sometimes. I made him jump. Actually fine, but I need to lure him back to the center of the room. Like that. There we go. Okay. Now I have to damage down in like a weird way. Kinda want these arrow drops. There we go. Now, so we do go over Ocarina to do Aero Skip in Snowhead, but we need the Ocarina to beat the game. So we're gonna have to get it back here. Okay, there we go. Okay, now we have Ocarina back. We want to skip half of Stone Tower Temple because we can use game to get light arrows, but it has to be on certain chests. And the chest that we want to use in Stone Tower Temple is behind a like a, a mirror shield block. But there's a weird property in this game where spring water has the same effect as light arrows and the mirror shield for some reason. 
Stone Tower Temple, I feel like I've never seen done as quick as it is in this run. It's kind of insane. So I can just dump water right here and it's going to melt the block for some reason. And now, by doing the same thing to this chest like we did to the one in Woodfall. We can get lighters. Also, I split at a very weird time here. There we go. So we just skipped all of Stone Tower, basically. But I have to get to Twin Mold, and I need to have as much magic as I can. I'm also going in with 20 arrows, which is very, very low. Now, normally to do the BK skip here in this dungeon, you, like the other ones, have to hover. But we have an alternative method. Let's see. It's kind of crazy because without a quip swap, half the stuff in this run just would not be viable. There we go. This is enough fight for sure. Imagine the power of whole milk. It's true. And I'm ahead of PB. <laughs> Somehow. Um, this boss fight sucks. Like, actually sucks. Especially because my arrow count is low, I like cannot afford to miss that many shots. I will be keeping an eye out for arrow drops now. Uh, I could go for that pattern, but it's a little bit of a hard shot to make that one. That's crazy! That's actually crazy. At least it didn't waste the arrow, but what the f Oh no. Dude, how am I missing? Uh... I need to wait for a pillar to break through those arrows. Okay, I am one arrow short right now. I could go out and like bait for the arrow drop, but I think I'm just gonna wait on it. I might have to run out. Okay, I definitely have to run out now. I was thinking maybe I could use like a bomb, but let me go ahead and drink this half milk just to be safe. Normally you berries and just like appears at your feet, so hopefully that happens here. Yeah. Nice, and it had arrow drops. Okay, rough one mold. I do still have two chews, right? My PB loses a bunch of time to having to go buy chews in the next cycle. So this is another problem, is now we have to fight Majora. Problem is, is that A, it's not, the clock tower's not open because it's not midnight on the third day, but also we can't hover into the clock tower. So we have to do another trick that is only done in this category, which is pretty cool. All right, this is a, uh... Similar to the one in Snowed Temple. But it's a little bit weirder of a setup for some reason. And then we just land in the clock tower. Okay. I am gonna go piss during this five minute long cutscene, so enjoy. So Majora is actually gonna be pretty interesting in this run because we don't have a sword as human. It also makes the fight significantly harder because doing stuff like stunning wrath and incarnation is a massive pain in the ass. All right, so I desperately need to get arrows. Okay. Now I have to not suck at this boss fight. Okay, so we don't have Sword as Human, so to damage Mask, we can jump slash him as Deku Link, and it's so strong it just sends you straight into the second phase. Deku Link only? Yes, that route was really bad. <laughs> Thankfully, Deku Link has a sword this time. Remains are trolling me right now. I think I'm gonna work. Okay, let's mask. 
Yeah, it does the same amount of damage as having the Great Fairy Sword. I'm gonna pray I could get Incarnation RNG here. If I just hold Sword Barrier, if I get lucky, he'll just run right into it. But not get lucky. So the backup is we can actually... I'm gonna drink milk too, just to be safe. But we can stun him by hitting the 0, zero, zero coordinates on the map, which is this, like, bomb flower thing. And that will stun him for some reason. I can also stun him as Deku without having to waste bombs if he behaves like that. It's very hard to knock him down again, like you can as Human Link, because Deku Link is so short. Oh my god, please. This is like actually, I think, the hardest phase in the fight. Okay, I'm just gonna use bombs again, because he's, he's actually trolling me. There we go. I'm used to Deku Link's height, that is not true. So Wrath is, in my opinion, actually easier in this category. Also, sick remains, dude. Um, but the problem is getting the stun and then not getting hit by remains. Barely did not PV. There we go. We beat Majora's Mask without the infinite sword glitch. That's huge. That's huge. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos on Zelda speedruns, randomizers, and glitches, make sure to click one of the videos on screen now. And of course, you know, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you all next time.